I'm busy rebuilding my Jeep 4 liter engine behind me over here and I ran into a few issues with the timing. So I thought I'd do a quick video of explaining how timing works and why it's important to know where top dead center is. Most internal combustion engines that you're gonna work with today are four stroke engines. So what that means is for every firing stroke or ignition of the mixture of fuel and air, there will be four movements of the piston. So I'm gonna use this as our example over here, this piston, it starts at the top, the explosion happens in the chamber, and what happens is that the piston is forced down as the power stroke, the first stroke. The second stroke is that that burnt gases that are now in the chamber need to be exhausted. So the exhaust valve is gonna open and it's gonna force all of that exhaust out. The third stroke that's gonna happen will be when the intake valve opens and you suck in a new charge of fresh air or your intake stroke. The valves are then gonna both close and then you will have a compression stroke where that air is compressed to the top of the cylinder again and obviously fuel is mixed in with that and we're ready to go again with a power stroke as soon as the spark plug gives ignition over here. So I'm going to go through in detail and explain to you exactly what that looks like inside of the engine. Probably the most important point that you'll work with when um, working on timing of an engine is what we call top dead center. Now top dead center is always taken on number one piston. So we will only focus on number one piston. The timing of the rest comes with the engine. So there's no need for you to worry about that at this point. There are a couple of things that have happened at top dead center. First of all, we have compressed the air and we've mixed it with fuel. So we're ready to receive the spark from the spark plug to call, cause the ignition um, of the mixture. The other important part to remember is that both valves are closed. So uh, we're gonna go through and look and understand what top dead center exactly means on our Jeep 4 liter engine behind me. On our harmonic damper over here, we have a tiny little notch at the back there. What I've done to make it easier for you to see on the camera is I've actually just drawn a line with a paint marker over there. Um, but this lines up with this tiny little notch. So if you are looking for it, you've got to look on this inside lip over here and find a notch. And that notch is your timing mark on your harmonic damper. Now at top dead center, this notch is going to align with the zero timing mark. And again, I've just uh, used a marker to highlight that so that you can see what it looks like. So we're looking for the notch on the harmonic balancer to line up with zero over here. Now I have to give a warning. Because this is a four stroke engine, this alignment is gonna happen twice for every uh, firing stroke of, of the engine. And this can be quite tricky because you think you've aligned the engine to zero, but actually you've just finished an exhaust stroke and about to start an intake stroke and you're not on compression stroke. So what we're gonna to do today is explain to you exactly what happens as it goes round so that we are ready to find the compression stroke when the timing mark aligns. All right, so this uh, engine here, as we showed you, is at top dead center over here. I know that it is at compression stroke because I checked it, but at the moment this piston is right here underneath the head of the engine over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this um, timing mark so that we are at 180 degrees out, which will bring my timing mark to over here. What's gonna happen as this engine rotates is that the piston is gonna slide down. Remember, we are on compression stroke. So effectively, we would have just had the spark from the spark plug and the hot gases are now expanding and pushing that cylinder one all the way down, the piston down till we are at the bottom. So what you'll see is that our timing mark is now at the bottom. What has happened is that the burning gases here have expanded and pushed this piston all the way down. So now that we're at the bottom of our stroke over here, what is gonna happen is that our exhaust valve here now needs to open. And as this timing mark rotates all the way back over there, our piston is now gonna move upwards and we're gonna push all of the um, exhaust gas out through this valve. So I'm gonna rotate this engine now until we see this valve opening. And then we're gonna go and look at the valve inside there. So there you can see that this valve has now compressed the spring over here, which means that the exhaust valve is now open. So it's pretty hard to show you this with a video camera, but if you look inside there, you can see that uh, light mark that's in there. And that is where the uh, valve is actually open to the cylinder. So we can see that the exhaust valve on uh, this cylinder is now open. If I take the light and I shine it through the spark plug hole there, you can actually see the light at the back there. So uh, we can look at the valve and see right now that this exhaust valve is open. All right, so we're gonna continue rotating the crank here. And what you will watch is that that exhaust valve has now closed. And you'll see that as we reach this timing mark over here, both our intake and exhaust valves are now closed again. 
So what you'll see now is that our timing marks are now aligned. So our piston is right now back up here at the top of the, of the cylinder. However, you'll know that our exhaust valve has just closed. So what that means is that as we move forward now, unlike the last time where both valves stayed closed, our intake valve is going to open now because as this piston now moves down, we need to suck in a fresh charge of air. So if you watch this inside valve over here, and I rotate now back to 180 degrees out to get the piston to the bottom of the stroke, what you will see is that this valve is now going to open. So let me rotate this. And there you can start seeing this valve opening. So there the valve is now fully open and we reach the bottom of our stroke. Now I'm not going to go any further because this valve is about to close. I actually want to show you what it looks like with that valve open. All right, so the uh, intake valve is much easier to see in the open position. So if you look over there, there is a dark machined ring, which is the valve seat. And then the rest of what you see there, the light color underneath that, that is actually the inside of the uh, head that we see over there. So it's actually quite easy to see that uh, this intake valve is now open and it's allowing air into the, the chamber. Once again, if I put the flashlight into the uh, spark plug hole at the back here, you'll be able to see the light shining through over there. So you can see that this valve is now open and we can see the light at the back. With our timing mark down here, we know that the piston is now at the bottom of the stroke. So it's down here somewhere and uh, it's just gone through and sucked in air. Now, if you have a carburetor, that air would be mixed with fuel and with a fuel injection system, your fuel injector would have fired just as that um, intake uh, cycle was happening. So that air that is now in this chamber is fuel and air mixed. And what you will see is as this piston now moves up, both these valves are going to stay closed. And so what's going to happen now is that we're going to have a compression stroke. And on a compression stroke, the easiest way to feel the compression stroke is, is if, if you put your finger here at the hole uh, of the spark plug, you can actually feel the air pushing out. And I know you can't see it, but you might be able to hear it. As I um, rotate this, you'll hear the air rushing out next to my finger. Right, and that's going to happen until we now reach top dead center on the compression stroke. All right, so how do we find top dead center on an engine? In essence, there's three ways. First, we can go through these two ports over here and look for the exhaust valve to open and then the intake valve to open. And immediately after that, when we get alignment at zero over here, we know that we are on compression stroke and so we should be at top dead center. The problem that you have with trying to look at the valves is that when the intake and exhaust manifolds are mounted, you don't have access to these ports, so you can't see them. So you don't know um, whether this mark over here is due to an, um, the exhaust being complete or that we've just been through a compression stroke. So I can't use that method for now. The second way we can determine um, if the cylinder is on the compression stroke is by actually just looking at the rocker arms over here which is nice and easy. As you rotate this, you'll see the exhaust will open and then the, in the intake will open and then they will both stay closed. So when you see exhaust, intake, and then this timing mark comes to zero, you know you're at top dead center. Now that method is great, except when you have your valve cover over here, you can't see the top of the valves. So that method won't work really well if you have your um, valve cover in place. The only method that will really work for us is to rotate the engine and put your finger over this spark plug hole. As you heard earlier, you can feel when the air rushes out of that. And that air rushing out is your compression stroke. So to me, the easiest way to find the compression stroke when you have all of your covers on this engine is to remove the spark plug, stick your finger over the hole, and then rotate the engine and feel for the air rushing out. When the air rushes out and your timing mark over there hits zero, you know that you're at top dead center. So there's many reasons why you need to know what top dead center is. In all likelihood, you have pulled your uh, cam position sensor out and uh, didn't make sure that you were at top dead center and now need to uh, re-establish the synchronization with your cam sensor and the engine. Now I'm gonna do a video that details exactly how to do that. It'll be in the link up in the top corner right now. So if you click on that link, um, I'll explain you how to uh, make sure that your uh, cam position sensor is synchronized with your timing. Well, I do hope that this video has helped explain what top dead center is and how to find it. For me, I will always use that method of removing the spark plug, putting my finger over the hole and then rotating till I feel the compression stroke. 
And then once I have the compression stroke, bring the timing mark up to zero, and I know that that should be top dead center. Um, one other trick that you can use is just to put a wooden dowel or a, um, a zip tie into the top of the cylinder, and you can actually feel the cylinder coming up the piston coming up to the top and when you are at the highest height of that piston you also know that that's top dead center so if you can't find your timing mark on your um, harmonic damper then certainly use a wooden dell into the um, spark plug hole and watch for that dell reaching the top the highest most point you're still going to need to find your compression stroke though so it's easiest to first feel compression stroke once you know you are on compression stroke then you insert the dowel and you allow that dowel to rise to the top of the stroke so highest point that you can find that dowel hope this video has helped please give me a comment do a like make sure that you subscribe to our channel for other useful videos